mysteries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. For you to try to achieve is for you to try to be a branch and produce fruit. He used an illustration. You can't produce fruit. So why does a branch attempt to try to achieve what can't be achieved by him? Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips, no matter where you are. Subscribe today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, you love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. We are changed. Our lives are composed of grace through our union with God. Our lives are composed of grace through our union with God. Now, how, how many of you believe that if Jesus used an illustration in the Bible of a natural thing, we probably ought to pay attention to it? So in John 15, you can go there, verses 1 through 5. Well, let's go to Galatians 5, 22, 23. I just want to show you this right quick. We, we, we might ought to pay attention if he uses a natural picture to try to illustrate a spiritual point, then we really need to pay attention to this mm -hmm. and really dissect that natural illustration to see what he was saying. Sometimes as Christians, we just ignore it. Like, oh, he really fixed that up. Fix it up, Jesus. He wasn't trying to fix it up so he can get an amen. <laughs> he was trying to use these illustrations to drive it home so you could clearly understand what he was saying. Right, so the first thing he says here, I love this, Galatians 5, he says, but the fruit of the Spirit, stop. He didn't say the fruit of the Christian. He said the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit, which means the fruit is of him, right? It's of the Spirit. Now, go to John chapter 15 to 1. John 15 to 1. Branches cannot bear fruit. Hmm? Branches cannot bear fruit. Branches cannot bear fruit. Oh, it's a fact. <laughs> Somebody say, I don't believe that. It don't matter. It, it's a fact. It don't, branches can't bear fruit. But vines can do so naturally without any effort. As a branch, you carry the nature of the true vine in you, and he will bear his fruit through you. He promised that. Somehow or another, we want to know, ignore this illustration as branches and change the rules. Now you're trying to bear what only Jesus can bear. You're trying to bear something instead of receiving it. So don't forget about this illustration here. I'm getting ready to show you. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 5 in the New King James Version. All right, let's, let's, read, it, uh, verse, uh, uh, let's read it all the way through to verse 5, and then let's come back and milk it a little bit. All right, he says, I am the true vine. My father, this is so cool, is the vine dresser. So you got to understand what a vine dresser does. When that vine is in the shade too much, a viticulturalist, I believe that's what it's called, they will come and they will dress that vine away from the shade to where it can get some, some sun. 
because it won't do well in the shade. It's got to, it won't grow unless it gets sunlight. So Jesus says, I'm the true vine. And when you're in the shade too much, you got a father who will dress you up out of that position and put you in a place where you can get some light. My God. Every branch in me. See, we're in him. In him we move. In him we breathe. In him we have our very being. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit. Now watch this carefully. He takes away. And I, boy, the way people have butchered that. It's the idea of if you don't bear fruit, God going to cut you off. A, vid a viticulturalist would never cut a, 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 a branch off because it, 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 it would be like a, a, a somebody could, taking your arm off. It wouldn't happen. He wouldn't, that would be deformity. He wouldn't do that. And you, you've heard the stories about this. You get, you get all, I just get all worked up. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he's going to take you away and cut you off. And I'm like, oh, God, help me to bear fruit. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I'm going to be cut off. I'm going to be cut off by tomorrow. You're going to be cut off by midnight. You're going to hell, boy. They move from cutting you off that you're going to hell. You better bear some fruit or you're going to hell. I didn't know what kind of fruit to bear. What, what, what kind of fruit do I need? In those days, I thought bearing fruit mean increase. And every branch that bears fruit, he's going to prune that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean. What? Because of the word which I have spoken to you. What? Abide in me. That word means set up residence. That's what word abide means. Set up residence in me, and I'm going to do the same in you. And as the branch cannot, the branch cannot, the branch cannot, the branch cannot, say out loud, I'm a branch. I'm a branch. The branch cannot, say out loud, I'm a branch. I'm a branch. The branch cannot, the, be, the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Religion is a branch that's trying to bear fruit by itself. That's what religion is. Religion is a branch that's trying to bear fruit by itself without God. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides and sets up residence in the vine, he said, neither can you unless you abide in me. Verse 5, I am the vine. I mean, Jesus is trying to make it plain. I'm the vine. Watch this. You the branch. I don't know. How, I don't know. I mean, you know, either we can't read or we just, we just, we're, we're volunteering, we're just volunteering stupidity. You just, I'm not the vine. I ain't never going to be the vine. I'm a branch. Turn to somebody, anybody, say, you a branch. You, you a branch? You a branch? And you, you trying to add brand new? You a branch. You a branch. Hello, branch. My name is Creflo Branch Dollar. That's all I'm going to be. It ain't never going to be Vine Dollar. It's Branch Dollar. I don't bear fruit of myself. Because branches can't do that by themselves. They got to have the right connection. He who abides sets up residence in me. It ain't talking about he who come to church every now and then. It ain't talking about, you know, uh, in and out relationship with, with the Lord. You, you live there. You, you have set up residence in him. You ain't no Christian today and not no Christian tomorrow. That ain't what he's talking about. He who abides in me and I am him. What happens? Bears much fruit. For without me, vine, you can do nothing. So when nothing's being done in your life, you need to check your connection. Because the vine ain't never failing. 
Now, let's break this down. Let's milk it. All right, verse 1. St. John 15, uh, verse 1. I'm the true vine, my Father is the vine dresser. Uh, verse 2. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. He takes away. Now, the Greek term for this phrase, taking away or cutting away, is the Greek word aro, A-I-R-O. That's the original Greek word here for taking away or cutting away. And this word aro means in this context of John 15 with this illustration, it, it means, uh, it clearly means to elevate, to raise up or to lift up. To elevate which means it's got to be down in the shade to elevate, to raise up, to lift up. So it sounds like this. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit will be elevated, raised up, lifted up. In other words, the vine dresser is coming to change your position out of the shade and put you in the sunlight so you can grow. All right. Now, he goes on and he says, and every branch that bears fruit, okay? So that means you're, 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 you're connected, right? Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. He prunes. Now, that's interesting. Grape vines don't produce fruit unless they're exposed to sunlight. We agree, right? If, if you don't, listen, listen, if you don't believe me, uh, uh, you can go to something on the internet and just Google how they take care of this, and it'll, it'll tell you, it'll, it'll give you the whole cultural aspects of how these things work, man. Wikipedia will we'll show you. All right, now watch this. this, this uh, the Greek term for the word purging or pruning is cath arrow, K-A-T-H-A-I-R-R-O, cath arrow. And what this means, this is almost shocking, it means cleansed already. In other words, <laughs> every branch that bears fruit, he cleanses it that it may bear more fruit. All right, now, 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 now watch this. Now, the next thing is, is how is he going to prune or cleanse? He says, you are already, talking to us, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. <laughs> so look what he says. He says, you are already clean through the word I have spoken to you. Uh, the pruning Jesus does is renewing our minds or our thinking to the truth of the gospel of grace. I'm going to renew your mind with the truth of the gospel, and you're going to be clean. As you have for the last four months been renewing your mind away from religion and tradition, you're being clean and repositioned to bear more of the fruit that the vine is making. Because as a branch, you won't be able to go into full display if you don't get cleaned and if you don't get repositioned. You don't make the fruit. But what happens sometimes, if you're not hearing the right thing to renew your mind with, you're still going to be stuck in the shade. All God's trying to do is get you out of the shade. And that's why this gospel's got to be preached. This gospel of grace has got to be preached all over the world. And, and look what he said. And then the end will come. You just can't preach anything and then call it the gospel. You can't do it. I'm going to be steady on this and steady on this and stay with it. My purpose is when I teach this message, I don't care about somebody making no noise. I don't care. I don't, I don't care about none of that. My, my greatest concern is that I leave a legacy of understanding about this gospel at the end of this one year, I've never been given a one-year series. 
This one-year series contains 104 messages on the gospel of grace. And we're cracking everything that can be cracked. And so I got four minutes left. I'm done. Do you understand the difference between achieving and receiving? For you to try to achieve is for you to try to be a branch and produce fruit. He used an illustration. You can't produce fruit. So why does a branch attempt to try to achieve what can't be achieved by him? That's what he's saying. And Christian people still waking up every day with a plan or a, um, what, do you, what do you call them things? Uh, a protocol for how to get the word to work for you so you can get what you're after a formula, one more step added to your third step. <laughs> and sometimes I wonder, is that really faith or is that doubt going somewhere to happen? Because it may be as rest is a way to authenticate whether you're in faith or not. Achieving seems to be a way to authenticate whether you're in unbelief and being disobedient. Do you know when you're in unbelief, when you don't believe what I just taught you, it's clearly from the Word of God, do you know what it says? You are in disobedience in the New Testament. And so why are you surprised, except the mercy of God shows up to try to do what he does, why are you surprised when, when you, how can you say as a Christian, I hadn't seen results since I've been saved, and you've been saved for 30 years? It has to be you're in religion, or you're trying to be a branch. You're trying to be a, a, a branch without a vine. You are a branch, but you don't need to be without a vine. This stuff is getting clearer and clearer. And, and what's happening to Taffy and I is that we're, we're like intensely focused on this stuff now. Like every day, it becomes our most vital pursuit. And we are seeing things happen and the Holy Spirit's having to show us that it happened. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? There are things happening where I, I'm so blown away on one of the things that happened. I looked at God, I said, God, do you, do you see what you did? Do you know what you've done? And he's like, I know what I did. Do you know what I have done? It's mind boggling. And, it, and it, it's, it's accelerating. God's looking I, remember, I wish I could remember what King was talking about, uh, Mr. King was talking about. God is looking for someone to explode and express his love upon. He's anxiously wanting somebody to embrace him so he can do some fantabulous things. I don't even know if that's a word, but he wants to do some stuff. Running you over with his blessings, do you understand? When was the last time you met somebody that wants to run you over with good? Let him. Let him. Get rid of the religion. Go home tonight and think about, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of being an achiever. I want to be a receiver. This is your receiving day. Somebody said, no, this is my achieving day. No, no, no. No, no, no. That day happened almost 2,000 years ago. Glory to God. The great achiever defeated the deceiver, but not so he can come and deceive us to go back to trying to achieve. You know what it meant when he, on the cross when he says, it is finished? It means everything is done without a, a cost due. It's finished. And religion keeps trying to tell you, no, it ain't. No, you need to do these five more things before it's really finished. You need to do this thing before it's really finished. And I have, I have tapped into a level of prosperity. It doesn't involve your tithing. It doesn't involve all these little things people be talking about. Well, you got to get your first fruit here, and then you got to get your tithes here, and then you got to don't forget your arms right here, you got to do that. It's, it's still going to be broke because you don't understand 
that there's a difference between being wealthy and rich. Rich people lose their money and they're doomed forever. But a wealthy person who got something on the inside, he'll always come back with more than what was taken and more than what was lost because he has the spirit of prosperity in him. And he received the spirit of prosperity and not trying to achieve prosperity. <laughs> Your choice is very simple today. I receive what you said, number one, or I ain't never coming back here no more. <laughs> number two, either one, I'm going to still truck on this trail. Amen. You have it, the difference between achieving and receiving. Now, you got to make your mind up what you're going to do. And this is what I'm finding out about people. People do what they want to do. Amen. I don't know. I no longer try to, try to work real hard, try to get people to change their mind about stuff. You're a free moral agent. You're going to do what you want to do. That's amazing to me. Used to spend, I'd stay up all night long with a believer. Have done many times. All night long trying to convince them to do what they need to do. Well, God will bless you. You know what I found out? One time I did that, God said, why did you get in my way? That was none of your business. If you'd have left it alone, I'd have had them straight by the end of the month. <laughs> Be careful that you're not trying to achieve validation for your good works while you completely ignore the Holy Spirit's leading and guiding and what he's trying to do to mature a person out of a place where they don't have to go back and do it no more. You've already labeled these five things. If I do them, I'll achieve so much, God will like me. No, well, honey, God already loves me without doing them five things. And if he wants me to do those five things, I'll, it'll, it'll be born out of my embracing his love and having a revelation for his love for me because no work is received by God unless it's born out of love. Number one. If you're doing work just to be validated, God ain't receiving that. He ain't receiving that. Go around the world, work yourself to death. And the only thing going to happen is when you get to heaven, he's going to say, you didn't do none of that out of love. You were, still, you were trying to get a trophy. You were trying to get somebody to recognize you. The only works that God receives are the works that are born out of, the, out of love. So if you ain't going to do nothing because you, and it's born out of love, I ain't going to give you no money because I feel bad. What am I doing? I might be helping you to stay broke for the rest of your life. Wow. Lord, what you want me to do? Lord, I know you love me, so I know you'll tell me and lead me in the right way. I know you're going to lead me in the right way. I know it. I'm receiving the right way. I'm receiving instructions to do that. But you doing stuff because you scared somebody going to shame you? Or what, what they call that thing today when they get rid of you forever? Cancel. Cancel you. But I've been, they've been trying to cancel me for, what, 40 years. <laughs> Pastor, why are you saying all that? Because I am free. I live in the liberty of this grace, and I am free. I don't have anything left to do on the planet except preach the gospel. And I plan on doing I am not going to be bumping into Jesus when I'm done. You know, uh-oh, there go Jesus. <laughs> I want to be able to say, I gave it all I had. Lord, I hollered, I screamed, I jumped. I studied, I believed. I stood up to the fears of this world. And, and hopefully I'll be, I'll have an opportunity for them to come up to me and give me that picture I've carried in my mind since I've been saved. He'll come up to me and embrace me and say, son, I'm proud of God to mighty number. Yeah. <laughs>